So I finally did it. I upgraded my speaker configuration from a 7.2.4 to a 15 channel 9.2.6 Dolby Atmos setup. Let's discuss. For the last three and a half years, I've been running a 7.2.4 setup in my theater. And since the channel has been growing pretty well, I started reaching out to a few companies for collaborations and I'm really excited because I should start getting some products in for review once they're able to restock their supplies. COVID. So now, I just have to be patient. In the meantime, however, I decided to use some of my existing speakers that have been just lying around the house and upgrade my 7.2.4 system to a 9.2.6 Dolby Atmos configuration and I'm super excited about it. But wait a minute, doesn't my MRX 720 only support 11 channels? That's correct, but at least one of the products I should be getting supports 17 channels, which I'm not going to tell you what it is until I get it. So I'll keep using my current configuration of 11 channels, but I want to be ready for testing equipment when I do start getting products in for review. This way I'll be able to have my entire system on the ready at all times. And all I'll have to do is switch some wires around back and forth. As I said, I'm adding four additional speakers to my setup. An additional two Atmos speakers up front mounted on the wall aimed at the listening position and two additional bed layer floor standing speakers for front wides. The extra Atmos channels will stay mounted while the front wires can be brought in and removed since it's just a matter of putting speakers on stands. But all the wiring will be staying in place, which brings me to the most painstaking process of all of this, the wiring. When my house was being built, I was fortunate enough to have a builder that offers a design center where you can customize your home to your heart's desire. You can probably guess what my priority was. If you guessed pre-wiring for speaker locations, you would be correct. So I had the builders pre-wire all my speaker locations for a 7.2.4 configuration and I love it. It absolutely rocks. But I didn't really consider or anticipate the need to pre-wire for additional channels. And it turns out I have the space for it. But consumer products that offered more than 11 channels just wasn't really a thing or widely available back in 2018 when my home was built. And I had no idea I would start a YouTube home theater channel. But here we are. So I found myself with quite a conundrum. How do I add wiring for four additional channels without mm. absolutely having to destroy my walls and try to drill through multiple two by fours and fire lakes? And then it hit me. There's already an access point that I made when I moved my projector. I needed to add access for HDMI and an IR blaster. So I could just use the access in the back of my theater Use my fishing tool to fish the wires up in the attic, use some pull string, tie all the wires together with some electrical tape, and then all I have to do is pull the wires up front. And there's actually a closet behind my screen that I intend to remove in the future and push the entire front soundstage back. But having the closet there actually makes this extremely easy because I don't have to try and drill through any two by fours. I can just make a few little holes in the sheetrock in the ceiling where there aren't any two by fours to pull the wires down and nobody will ever see it because it's behind my closet behind the screen. So for the top front left and right Atmos speakers, I'll be using some really old Polk T15 bookshelf speakers with some wall mounts that I found on Amazon. And I'll leave a link in the description for those. Now, I haven't decided which speakers I'm gonna be using for my wides yet. Probably the Amos, which I just started reviewing this week. Now you might notice, my other four Atmos speakers are in ceilings, not on wall. What gives? Well, first and foremost, budget. I've had the T15s for over 10 years and they've just been sitting in my room. So instead of purchasing more speakers, I can save money. And second, remember, my theater is now going to be doubling as my testing rig, which is awesome because I'm not losing anything. In fact, is going to enhance my movie experience whilst being able to test out different equipment and speaker configurations 
not only for myself, but for you guys. So I wanna be able to test the differences between Instantly Atmos versus Bookshelf on the Wall Atmos. And now I can. With a 9.2.6 configuration, I can also test to see which configuration is more beneficial in object-based audio. An additional two high channels or two front wides. Real quick guys, if you guys would like to help out the channel financially, there is a generic Amazon affiliate link in the description. In fact, it's in the description of all my videos and it doesn't cost you anything, but if you purchase anything using that link, I will get a small commission. And if you need some awesome home theater seats, check out my Valencia affiliate link also in the description. All right, so here I'm using my stud finder to make sure there aren't any studs where I want to mount my speaker. And I was 99.9% .9 sure that there weren't any studs where I was gonna be placing the speakers, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. And then here I'm measuring where I wanna mount the speaker and then marking my areas where I need to insert the drywall screws. And I did the exact same thing, the exact same process on the other side. And then here, I'm taping all the wires together with some pull string, and the pull string is tied to my fishing rod that's already partially in the attic. So after all of this, I spent about an hour and a half in my attic trying to pull all the cables in. But this time, I was smarter because I left some pull string in the attic and tied it to one of the ceiling joists for future wire pulling. Man, am I glad to be done with the attic. Well, at least for now. Now, don't be like me guys because like an idiot, I forgot to account for the height of my speakers and when I went to mount them, I didn't have enough room to put the speaker on the mount so I had to take both mounts down, take the screws and the anchors out which was an absolute pain and remeasure and do it all over again. <laughs> but I finally got it all completed and now I'm ready for testing. Whenever that is. And I wait. Alright guys, it's time for query of the week. This week's query is, what configuration are you running in your home theater? If you've got a 9.2.6 config, are you using front wides or do you prefer six Atmos speakers? And do you use in-ceiling or bookshelf speakers for your Atmos? Sound off in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna be doing a comparison video on in-ceilings versus bookshelves for Atmos. As always, no matter where you're at in your home theater journey, make sure you enjoy it. For Haterite Cowboy Cinema, I'm Haterate Cowboy, and I'll see you guys in the next video.